Welcome back to These Things Are Written. On this Monday, we are going to get right into our reading where Paul moves into the second issue in the Corinthian church. Uh, let's start by reading verses 1 and 2 of uh, 1 Corinthians 5. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you and of a kind that is not tolerated even among the pagans. For a man has his father's wife. And you are arrogant? Ought you not rather to mourn? Let him who has done this be removed from among you. So we now get to the second issue, and it is a big one. One that deals with sexual immorality. Someone uh, has taken his father's wife as his own. Not that it's his mother, but probably a stepmother of some kind, something in that. And as it, we read it, it, they're accepting of it and almost seems, seem boastful or bragging about it in some way. Um, and Paul is saying, you know, this is not all right. In fact, that person should be removed from the church for the things that he is doing. Let's continue uh, now, verse 3. For though I am absent in body, I am present in spirit, and as if present, I have already pronounced judgment on the one who did such a thing. When you are assembled in the name of the Lord Jesus, and my spirit is present with the power of our Lord Jesus, you are to deliver this man to Satan for the destruction of his flesh, so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. Your boasting is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Cleanse out the old leaven that you may be a new lump, as you really are unleavened. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us therefore celebrate the festival, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Though Paul is absent, he is reminds them that he is with them in spirit. And because of that, he is saying that as I am with you, I would at this point hand that man over to Satan. Now, what does that mean? That means really, um, we might call it excommunication in the church. Isn't that a little harsh? Well, he is sleeping with his father's uh uh, father's wife, right? That is a pretty major issue. And as Paul said, not even the pagans do this thing. Not even the pagans accept this. But yet it seems like the Christian church in Corinth was not only accepting it, but mentioning it and talking about it as if it was something almost to boast about. Paul says, your boasting isn't good. Cleanse out the old leaven. In in other words, get rid of those things of the flesh and live in the things of the Spirit. Because a little bit of sin in the church uh, tells everyone that it's okay and it can destroy the whole church. Verse 9 of our reading, and we're going through the end of 13. I wrote to you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people, not at all meaning the sexual immoral of this world or the greedy or swindlers or idolaters, since then you would need to go out into the world, out of the world. But now I am writing to you not to associate with anyone who bears the name of a brother if he is guilty of sexual immorality or greed or is an idolater, reviler, drunkard, or swindler, or even to eat with such one. For what have I to do with judging outsiders? Is it not those inside the church whom you are to judge? God judges those outside. Purge the evil person from among you. Is Paul encouraging a shunning where we just avoid people who have sinned? No, he's in college, encouraging calling people to, to calling people who are caught in sin 
out of that sin. And not just any person, but Christians. He says, don't judge the outsiders. I will judge them. But you are to judge those in the church. You are to judge those who are brothers and sisters. Why? Because we are called to call them out of sin into repentance. And doing so in humility and love for the other person. Not out of pride or us being better than them, but out of out of sincerity and love for them, not accepting of sin, but calling people out of it, out of sin in a very biblical way. It's difficult to do, but it is necessary. And as we see in Matthew 18, we're called to go one-on-one. -on -one. If that doesn't work, take someone else from the church to go and, and speak with them as well. And if that still doesn't work, then you bring it before the church. The purpose is this to get rid of the leaven, the sinfulness out of the church, the people who are pulling other people down by their sin. We'll be getting more into this in the next few days as well, so I hope to see you on Tuesday as we continue. God bless.